Are you making mistakes when disinfecting your home? If so, you could be leaving more germs on surfaces than you think. And that's bad news because germs, especially on high contact surfaces like doorknobs and light switches, can make you and your family sick. It's never been more important to make sure you're sanitizing and disinfecting properly to kill germs on surfaces than right now. So in this episode, we're sharing some of the science behind how disinfecting actually works. Plus, we'll tell you mistakes to avoid and give you some real tips that you can use at home to help keep your family safe. It's all coming up right now. You're listening to the Odo Show Podcast, your source for real cleaning talk and tips. Presented by Otoban, the original odor eliminator since 1980. Here are your hosts, Val and Dave. Welcome, 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 and thanks for listening to the Odo Show podcast. I'm Dave, and I am joined by my co-hostess with the co-mostess, Val. Hey, Val, you ready to talk about disinfecting? Hello, everyone. Yes, Dave, I am. Sanitizing and disinfecting are so important now more than ever. This is a great topic, and we've got some awesome information for you coming right up. You are absolutely correct. Now, before we get started, I want to throw out a proper definition of a sanitizer or disinfectant here. A sanitizer or a disinfectant is different from a normal cleaner because these products actually kill germs. They kill bacteria. They deactivate viruses. And anything that kills an organism... Uh, any of those products have to be registered with the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, to prove, number one, that they work and do what they say they do, and number two, that they are safe to use when used as directed. Now, these are things we know as sprays and wipes. You see them around the home, in schools, businesses, and hospitals. What about all those weird things we see on the Internet right now, like necklaces and badges that are supposed to kill germs and viruses? (laughs) Yeah. Okay, guys, look, a necklace or a badge is not going to protect you from the virus. (laughs) It doesn't work that way. Those are not disinfectants, and I have yet to see any of those weird products coming from overseas that are actually registered with the EPA. Yeah, that's just somebody trying to make a quick Yeah, guys, don't, don't fall for that stuff. Now, if you like our podcast, please take a moment to leave us a short review on Apple Podcasts. It really means the world to us, and it helps the show out a lot. Plus, if you leave us a written review, we'll be sure to give you a shout-out on a future episode. Yes, we want to hear from you, so please pause this and leave us a review right now. Unless, of course, you're driving. Yeah, maybe wait if if that's the case. So let's get started, Dave. It's time for a little trivia, or as I call it, stump the nerd. Hey, I'm not a nerd. I'm a scientist. Well, that's what I said. Oh, well, (laughs) okay. So here's your trivia question. All right. When disinfecting, what is the correct amount of time, also referred to as dwell time, that a disinfectant should be left on the surface before wiping? Oh, you're sneaky. That's a trick (laughs) question. (laughs) See, guys, dwell time, or you may hear it called wet contact time or contact time, is how long the surface has to stay wet so the disinfectant contacts the germs and can kill them. But it varies because not all disinfectants use the same chemistry, they're not all the same concentration, and they're not all tested against the same germs, the same bacteria or viruses. So there is no set dwell time. You can't just say, hey, it's always five minutes. You have to look at the product you're using, look at what you're trying to eradicate on the surfaces and how you want to use it to know what the correct dwell time is. So there you go. It's a trick question. You tried to get me there. So let's talk about the proper way to disinfect around your home. Now, this is all based on questions that we've gotten through the years from customers. Okay, so the first one that we have is what is pre-cleaning and why is that so important? Okay, well pre-cleaning is the first step in proper disinfecting. You remember just a second ago I said the disinfectant has to contact the germs in order to kill them. Right. Well, if you've got a surface that has visible soil on it, we call it heavy soil I think on our label. Uh, they used to call it gross filth when the language was a little <laughs> bit different back in the back in the days. <laughs> If you've got soil on a surface, like say you've got a dried spaghetti sauce stain on your countertop and you spray disinfectant on that, well, the disinfectant can't get between the spaghetti sauce and the counter to contact the germs. Now, when you wipe that counter down, you may very well clean that spaghetti sauce off, but there's a possibility that you've left a spot there that's not properly disinfected because the product couldn't get to the germs. And those little creepy crawlies start to... to 
multiply and yep. spread out again. Yeah, and they can be a problem. So always clean the surfaces before you disinfect. That's always, cleaning is the first step of disinfecting. We say that repeatedly. Okay, so cleaning and disinfecting. Can you use a disinfectant to pre-clean? That is a definite maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so by that I mean... Uh, some disinfectants act as cleaners too. Ours does. Uh, the Odaban products do. Um, and you can tell if you read the label, there are cleaning instructions. Now, some disinfectants, though, don't have cleaning directions on the label. That means they are only designed to disinfect. They don't have the solvents and the surfactants to do a good job cleaning the surface. So if you have cleaning uh, instructions, follow those on the label. With ours, it's, it's clean, and then you do a second application for disinfecting. Um, but if they don't have cleaning directions on the label, you need to find another good cleaning product to use before you disinfect. That's what makes ours so awesome is it's just one product that does it all. You're right. Triple threat. A third question for you is what's the difference between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting? How do you get to each of those steps? Okay, so you hear these knocked around a lot, these individual terms, and people sort of use them interchangeably, but they're not. We just talked about cleaning. That's removing the, the visible soil, the things you can see on the countertop. Now, sanitizing, that's your first level of, of eliminating germs. That is sort of the household level of clean. For most normal humans, this creates a safe environment. If you're not immunocompromised, if you're relatively healthy, then this is going to be a sanitary. Note there, sanitary, sanitizing. You see uh, the connection? Yeah, I, I get it. Yep. This is going to be a sanitary surface. And what that means is you are killing most of the germs and, 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 and all that on the surface. Not all of them, but most of them. Enough okay. enough to be safe. Okay, so could the five-second rule be safe to use on that? If it's a sanitized surface, I will say yes. You know, if, if, if you've sanitized your counters and you throw a piece of bread down on the counter to make a sandwich, it's going to be okay. As long as you're a normal, healthy adult, blah, 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 you know. Gotcha. Uh, but on the floor, I'm not going with five-second rule on the floor. <laughs> As a scientist, I refuse to endorse that. <laughs> Now, disinfecting. Okay, so sanitizing is your first step. Disinfecting, that's the big guns. This is your, it's as safe as we can reasonably make this surface. You have eliminated almost every germ on the surface. You've eliminated the bacteria and the viruses. It's as safe as we can get it. Wow. And this typically uh, just takes longer contact times. Like on our product, you'll see a 60-second claim uh, for sanitizing, but a 10-minute claim for disinfecting. So you can see there is a lot more time involved there to reach that top level of safety. And this is a, considered a safe surface. This is what you see in hospitals. If you've got people that are already sick or people that are immunocompromised, mm -hmm. uh, people that are at higher risk, this is what you want. And we're seeing that in our homes now, too. Right. And right now with a pandemic on, you're right. Disinfecting is something that we need to be thinking about on those high-touch surfaces, using the full contact time, waiting that 10 minutes if that's the recommendation, to actually make sure your doorknobs, your light switches, your, your faucets, those sort of things are disinfected. Now, if you're more of a visual learner, we That's actually me. we actually did a cool little video where we demonstrated cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. You can find that on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Odaban. We do a ton of videos on on how to use our product, on uh, neat tips and tricks, things you might not have thought of, and and some of the science behind cleaning. And so that one's up there. It's a lot of fun. You can subscribe to the channel. You click the little bell icon, and that way you will always get notifications anytime we put up new content, and we're doing that a lot. Like, what was the last, uh, the last DIY that you shot for the channel? The last one I did was how to get the funk out of your shoes. Oh, the stinky sneaker one. Yeah, that was a good one. I think the last one I did I was... fun doing that. ...was... was Pet soils on carpet, I think, was the last yeah, one I shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I kind of like mine better. Yeah, stinky shoes <laughs> yeah. is probably more fun than cleaning I can deal with that better than poo. Yeah, poo, pee, and vomit. <laughs> but there's a ton of new stuff coming out. we got a bunch of stuff on the books to do this year. So subscribe there, and you'll never miss one of those. Now, we promised you guys that we would tell you about the five most common mistakes on disinfecting, so we're going to get into that here. Have you got that list over in front of you there, Val? I do. All right, what's what's our first mistake? Our first it? mistake is cleaning but not disinfecting. Ah, see, this goes back to what I was talking about, the difference between cleaners and disinfectants. Make sure that whatever you're using to disinfect is actually a registered EPA disinfectant, uh, not some wacky uh, you know, overseas import necklace type thing. And also, maybe not a home remedy at this point. Yeah, you that's know, not safe. 
Well, it's just, you know, everybody says, hey, vinegar disinfects. Well, mm. it's not a particularly mm. effective disinfectant. And even if you're using something like peroxide, which is a disinfectant, right. you got to know how much uh, of the active chemical is in it. When you mix it up, you've got to think about how long it actually has to contact the surfaces. And unless you do a lot of research, these are really hard things to determine for a home-mixed product. On an EPA product, all that work has been done for you. People stand behind it. The government has said, yes, it will It will kill these things that it says it kills, and it's safe to use it in the manner it's, it's described. So you know, don't waste your time trying to do all that yourself. Just buy the EPA register stuff, and you know it's you're not putting the safety of your family at risk. Right. Okay, so another mistake that people make is not measuring their disinfectant solution correctly. Right. And we talk about this in, uh, in a lot of things. We even have videos on our, our YouTube page about how to measure out Odaban mm-hmm. concentrate to make the disinfectants. Because, of course, if you don't use enough product, you're not going to get the kill claims that you think you're getting. And on the flip side of that coin, if you're using too much, that's also not not a good thing. You're right. You can actually damage surfaces sometimes, or even if you don't damage them, you can leave them sticky and nasty, and you're using a whole lot of product that may or may not be easy to get these days. Yeah, you're, you're actually just wasting money that you're way. You're absolutely right. Now, here's one of my pet peeves. This mistake is mixing disinfectant chemicals. Mixing. Yes, that's dangerous. It is, and it seems like everybody bleach is the one everybody goes to. Everybody wants to add a little bleach to something. Guys, bleach is one of the most dangerous things you can mix with other products. It can release chlorine gas, which is deadly. You could actually mix two disinfectants and have their active ingredients cancel each other out. They neutralize each other, and then you aren't getting the kill on the surface that you want to get. And so just never mix disinfecting products or really any cleaning products. Use it the way it's directed. Okay, and this one uh, goes back to what we've been talking about with dwell time is uh, folks wiping away the disinfectant too quickly and not reaching that required dwell time. It seems to be a a theme for this episode, doesn't it? It does, but it's important. It is, and it's something a lot of people shortcut on that you can't. It's the Um, key. Yeah, read the bottle. Make sure you've got the dwell time that is recommended. And a a sidebar to this, um, something that's really popular these days, do you use disinfecting wipes in your house? Yeah, I sure do. Yeah, I do too. They're really convenient. The problem is they have a wet dwell time recommendation as well. Read the package. It's on there. And so what happens is you pull a wipe out and start wiping down the counter, and maybe the first three or four feet are nice and wet, and you're meeting the dwell time, and it's disinfecting. But by the time you get to the other end of your kitchen counter, that wipe has dried out, and you're not getting any wet dwell time at all. And you're just pushing dirt at that point. Right. You're, you're probably not even cleaning. M- most people use a wipe for way too long. To, to really get disinfecting, you've got to watch that dwell time, and you've got to use probably more wipes than you think you do. So make sure you're using them correctly. You know, before I really paid attention to the to the label and the instructions, because, you know, you just see it says disinfecting wipes. Yeah, you pull it out, you wipe it, it's disinfecting. And so you think, okay, I'm disinfecting. But no, yeah. you really have to use them properly. And and I, for me, I found that that really wasn't the most effective way to disinfect. So I'll use those like for cleaning. Yeah. And then I'll use our spray or a spray and make sure that that is totally soaked and the dwell time is met. Yeah, I, I prefer the sprays for disinfecting too mm-hmm. because you can visibly see that I've completely wet the surface. It's it's much easier to make sure the surface is wet with those. Yeah, and it's so easy to, to miss a spot when you're wiping. That's true. You know, yeah, so. wiping pattern matters as well. Right. Now, the last one I want to talk about here is focusing on the wrong areas to disinfect. And this is kind of a strange concept because you think, well, what's the wrong area to disinfect? And and the bottom line is you need to hit you need to pay attention to disinfecting the most important things. And and what are Val, I'm putting you on the spot. What are the most important places to disinfect in your home? I would think all your high traffic touch areas like light switches, doorknobs, handles, faucets, door TV handles, remote. TV remote, ding ding ding. You we know, we, yeah, we do, we did a video and talking about that when oh, we yeah. were traveling. You know, yep. in, in hotels, germs on the on the remote. But yeah, that works in our homes too. It's all your high contact points and. And so if you're trying to disinfect everything in your house, you're going to fatigue yourself. That's prob- a lot. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy investment. And it probably makes you less effective at making sure you disinfect the really important places. You know, and something like a shower or a bathtub probably doesn't need full disinfecting. Cleaning or sanitizing is probably enough yeah. there. 
Uh, but making sure you properly disinfect all of those high contact touch points and really spend your energy wisely is key there. Yes. Well, guys, those are the top five mistakes in disinfecting. We hope we've given you some information that will make you a little more effective, help keep your family safer, and make sure you're disinfecting correctly around the house. If you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on YouTube and Facebook and all over the interwebs. <laughs> and uh, until we see you again, make, make life, life fresh. fresh. Thanks for listening to The Odo Show, presented by Odo Band. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Until next time, make life fresh.